city where commercialism is a religion and celebrities that's God, there is a video podcast focused on the heart and soul of gay culture. Art from the Heart, NYC, from the vault. So here with Kate from the B-52s, you were a presenter here? Yes. So what has the B-52s been doing? Partying. <laughs> we, Out of bounds? Well, we, just, play, we, just, we did, just did a show in Atlantic City for two nights, and we had a blast there. That was kind of, we played at the Sands, the Glamorous Sands Hotel. It's, uh, it was kind of a funny place to play, but we had a great time. The, there was a band in the bar, kind of a James Brown imitation band, and we rocked out after the show, so <laughs> we had a great time. Especially since uh, you guys had really broken through in the new in the new wave community, what's it been like now as you've expanded beyond that? Beyond the new wave. Well, not beyond, but you know, like the idea, you're you're obviously appreciated by many more people than than you were back in the early days. Well, I mean, it was nice to be part to feel in the beginning a part of a real specific community that was striving to do something. Just like right now, these awards are really presenting um, a lot of people, gay and lesbian, and and others, who have specific music that's not in the mainstream, and that's really exciting to see this music kind of break out and be heard. You know, I've heard a lot of new artists here tonight that I just love, and I'm going to go out and buy their records. So. All right. 
obviously everyone knows Deborah Gibson. The question is, when did you come out? I didn't. I haven't. I won't. But I'm uh, very supportive of the gay community, and, and the gay community has always been very supportive of me. So I'm here. I'm here. Interesting. Have you? So what other work have you done with the gay community? Oh, goodness. Tons of stuff. I mean, obviously the Broadway community is very active. Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. Um, and I performed in gay clubs probably... Probably four shows a weekend when I was 16 for a whole year. I was the only girl in my high school who met a drag queen before my 17th birthday. <laughs> what is it like doing like when everybody starts mobbing you? How do you feel about that? As long as they call me Deborah and not Debbie, everything will be okay. You've been writing your own music for a long time where a lot of the artists, a lot of artists get other people to write the music and they have no idea about instrumentation. What really drove you towards the idea? Because you started doing that when you were like 17, like actually writing your own music. I just feel like if it's going to be your name out there and your face and all the imagery and everything that I know for me when I buy into an artist, I want to know that I'm really getting them and their heart and their soul and not somebody else's interpretation, interpretation of them. Um, and I just have it up here, so I knew that if I learned the technical aspect of it that I could produce and I could arrange, and I'm a classical musician, so I, uh, I think it would be dreadful sitting home and kind of waiting for a hit song to arrive in the mail instead of being in control of it yourself, and you know, if you have a dry spell, at least it's your own dry spell, and if, if you're going through tough times, your songs are going to reflect that, and if you're happy, your so you know, I just think that it should be an honest reflection of the artist. You had mentioned that you're classically trained at, at, at what instrument? Piano started when I was like five years old yeah I'd like to get back to it at some point get a little rusty when you leave it alone for a while so then now you're more of a keyboardist as a comparison to a pianist um you know what I still call myself a pianist I don't really like keyboards I've never been a huge synthesizer fan and sequencing fan I like to play things live and I actually own one of Liberace's pianos so you can find me sitting sitting at the piano most nights getting blinded by the glare of all the glass and mirrors <laughs> We're here with Reverend Alfreda and Reverend Zachary Jones. And you're the new bishop from New York? Yes, uh, for Unity Fellowship Church Movement. And uh, we basically was a nom nominated for the most out song, which was written and created by our founder, Bishop Carl Bean, of Life Records, Love is for Everyone. We are an openly gay organization that's nationally known. And uh, our CD was created for the benefit of African-American people living with HIV and AIDS. So I hear that you're now going international? Yes. Well, wherever we can basically go and get the word out that, uh, you know, our people are still dealing with this particular disease and that, you know, hopefully through this music and through this form of art, people will be healed. So we're here with the legendary Bob Mould. How you doing, Bob? Oh, good. Trying to wind down, trying to get unnervous from having to walk on stage without an instrument to hide behind. <laughs> so you want a glama? Yes, I did. What? was shocked I thought earlier today uh, it sort of dawned on me I was like what happens if I have to go back up there after I give out an award what what am I gonna say and I, it was nice it was very very sweet and it's been a really great evening you know for I think for everybody involved you know so now being a presenter here was that like that was a special honor for you because I remember from our last conversation and so what was it like actually once you walked out on stage and saw all the people uh my fly open <laughs> no <laughs> it's uh, and then i was like oh no it's not but <laughs> it, was, it, was it was okay it was good it, it uh i i like i said i get really nervous at things like this i just never never fancy myself much of a public speaker and i have like this whole idiosyncratic nervous behavior so but it was good it's fun it's this is a great evening like what was your favorite award if you had one like you know like from what you've seen here like what has really inspired you um i thought the with lou harrison you know the lifetime achievement award that was just so uh, was really floored by that you know when you you know as a as a writer you know when you see people who have dedicated their whole life and they just continue on you know and he's in his 80s and is you know reworking some of his you know some of his pieces and I mean that, that that that's the kind of thing that keeps all of us going I think when we you know when we see that you know when I see that I just get so encouraged just like cool you know maybe in 40 years you know people will come to t ask me what I think you know instead of now while I'm active and you know sellable so it's it's you know it's it's great you know that that that's that's a really cool that's real touching and really just great all the way around so we're here with the Clasmatics. they just won for 
Acoustic Folk. What's the official title of it? Folk Acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> but since it's Yiddish, I was reading it right to left. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> do you do all your, all your uh, songs in Yiddish? And mostly in Yiddish. Yeah. Uh, Yiddish yeah. is our life. Uh. And our project. <laughs> Queer Yiddishism is our project. Queer Yiddishism? Yeah. Y you haven't heard too much about it yet, but just wait. <laughs> well, let's hear about it right now. Well, Queer, queer, Yiddishism, queer Yiddishism is the stance of being Yiddishist and queer and saying, we are out loud and proud in Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that style of music, it seems like a cross between like, you know, um, especially the, the, the newer versions seem to be a cross between like more aggressive rock and like, you know, klezmer. Basically, it's an expression of who we are as, as, as people, as, as queer people, as Jewish people, mm -hmm. and as New Yorkers. Wolfgang Busch, and I'm here with Lipsinka. How are you, Lipsinka? All right, how are you? What are you up to? So many medals and things. Well, you know, that imperial court thing. Right, we're here at the Manhattan Center where Judy Garland did a fabulous concert in 1962, and now it's 1999. Of course, I'm not going to live in the past, and we're here at the Glamour. The Gay and Lesbian American Music Awards. Wonderful. And what was, uh, what were your, what's your capacity? What oh, I was a presenter, and I presented the jazz recording, jazz vocalist. Uh oh, we need help. It was something to do with jazz. Something I remember to do with that. Jazz. Much. That's good enough. For and us. the winner's okay. name was Fred Hirsch. Oh, Fred Hirsch. Yeah, he was. Uh, and we interviewed him. Oh, you got him. Oh, okay. And what are you personally up to these days? Oh, I'm doing. Um, I don't know when your show is going to be on, but on April 23rd and 24th, I'm doing a staged reading of Imitation of Life. Mm -hmm. It's called Imitation of Imitation of Life. And I'm doing the Lana Turner part. Mm -hmm. Do you know the movie Imitation of Life? Um, no. No. Oh. But that's okay. Well, it's about a black girl who passes for white. But I don't play that part. We're here with Fred Hirsch, who just won for a Best Jazz Artist. Thanks very much. It's great to, uh, that they have a jazz category that's new this year, so... I think it's great. It was nice to hear two jazz performances on the awards tonight. I think uh, jazz is, is present at the Glamos, and I like it. Do you find that like jazz has been getting a lot of acceptance and is growing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, certainly, uh, the jazz world, like you know, a lot of the music industry, can be homophobic. And I've been out as a jazz musician for more than 20 years. I was one of the first to kind of really come out about it. and. Uh, I think due to my efforts and other people's efforts, it's becoming less homophobic, but hey, you know, uh, it's everywhere. But I'm, I'm hopeful that things are getting better. And jazz seems to be in people's consciousness a lot more now than it was, say, 10, 15 years ago. Have you uh, gotten support from the industry? Very much so. I'm with uh, one of the Atlantic Records labels, and they're incredibly supportive. So I'm very lucky in that way. And have, have they had you on tours? Have college radio been good to you? You know, the mainstream radio? Yeah, I've, I've been very lucky. The, the career is going quite well. And I've also done a number of CDs as fundraisers for uh, uh, AIDS services and education organizations. I'm very involved as a fundraiser spokesperson. So, uh, and uh, all the record companies have just been very, very helpful. So I'm very lucky in that way, too. Uh, what organizations have you been working with? Uh, mostly classical action, performing arts against AIDS. I produced two jazz CDs for them that have so far raised about 150,000 bucks. So I can't write a check that big, <laughs> but I can certainly uh, get people together and uh, move some energy. So that's what I try to do. <laughs> Obviously, everybody knows Sandra Bernhardt. What's it been like doing Broadway? Uh, it was a great experience. I loved it. It was wonderful. I love doing Off-Broadway. I love doing Broadway. And I look forward to coming back and doing other things. Yeah. So what, what are those other things that you're planning on working on? Um, I don't know. I've got to meet with people and see what's happening, you know, in terms of other people's work, you know. My own, I'm still touring with this show, so I'll be doing that for a while as well. Where are you touring? Uh, next week I'll be in Minneapolis. I don't know when you're playing this, but... Oh, it'll be about in like three months. Oh, okay. Well, I will have been in Minneapolis and a few other markets at that point. We're here with Industry Rebel, Anna DeFranco. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I see you've won a glama. Yeah, I got, I got a crazy one, a <laughs> pointy one <laughs> for those pointy types. So what's it like been, being like the poster Industry Rebel? Um, I don't know. I don't really feel like one. I just, you know, try to be myself. 
which is, you know, I, I can't even tell you how what that's like. You don't want to Actually, yes, we do want to know. <laughs> oh, well. This is an NBC. Uh, I was nervous coming here, you know. Um, just, you know, making speeches and getting crazy little statuesque is, is nerve-wracking to begin with. And uh, my newfound, you know, straight girl from hell lifestyle, <laughs> you know, is, um, is a little... Uh, controversial so I hear but I'm really happy to be here and, and feel the love <laughs> basically yeah it seems like the, you've just blossomed into like you know really being motivational to a lot of different people and it seems like there's a lot of people stepping up now that understand that they don't have to be the industry whore quote unquote you know mm, yeah well um, yeah I guess I've just always had a pathological independence and I think, you know, my mother made a dire mistake when she told me I could do whatever I wanted to do. I took it very literally. And, um, you know, it's gotten me here. So, I, you know, it, it's, a, it's an honor for me to be an inspiration for other people to become themselves, too, you know. Because we all, we all got to help each other do that, so. In a city where commercialism is a religion and celebrities that's God, there is a video podcast focused on the heart and soul of gay culture. Art from the Heart NYC. From 